Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Panther Schools. My name is Amit Singh and in this video we are going to see how we can integrate Slack using MuleSoft. So Slack is very popular software for collaboration among the teams, among team members, various projects uh, and uh, we can have the calls. So basically Slack is very a uh, popular tool these days and most of the organizations are using Slack for multiple purposes. So we are going to see how we could integrate Slack with Milsoft and then how we can send a simple message to the Slack. So the very first thing that we need to do is, I have already created a project. What you need to do is, we need to add a Slack connector because if you go to Mule Palette and search for Slack, okay. I have already got the Slack here. I have already added in my project. But what you need to do is click on this search in exchange. It's going to open a pop up for you. And here you need to search for Slack. So type Slack, hit enter, and you need to select the first connector that is Slack connector Mule 4. Don't select the second one. Click on add and then finish. So once you add your connector, you will see the connector is added here into your project uh, on the right hand side. And then go to your uh, XML file that you have created. For me, it is max the mule and uh, need to go to the global element, click on create. And here you will see if you type Slack, you will see Slack connector config. Select that and click on OK. So here we are going to see multiple things. If you see here, there are so many things that we have got the base URI, then we have got consumer key, consumer secret, authorization URI. Authorization token URL, then there are the scopes. Then here we have got auth callback config, and you could see here, right? Callback path, authorized path, and external callback URL. Okay. So before we go ahead and uh, start working on the Slack application, one thing that important thing I would like to let you know is that the token that we will get is we will get the token is going to be stored within the object store automatically in mule and that application will the token will be used by mule application whatever the access token we will get okay so let's get back to our google chrome and search for api.slack.com and if you don't have a slack you uh, slack account you could go ahead and sign up for free there is no paid slack account needed and once you're logged in click on your app and uh, if you have applications, your applications are going to be listed here. And if not, we will click on create new and we're going to create from scratch. And I'm going to give it a name. Select a workspace. I'm selecting the workspace that is uh, Panther Schools for demo purpose. And then create application. So your application is going to be created and while you are under basic information if you scroll down you will see there is client id and there is client secret so we need this client id copy this and paste it for the consumer key and then we need uh, client secret so we are going to copy and paste for consumer secret okay and if you see here in this uh, link it says auth.v2.access okay so in our authorized URL, we need to say auth, then v2, and then we have to say forward slash auth, v2, then forward slash authorized. And similarly, within this access token, we need to say auth dot v2 dot access. These are the two changes that we need to make to make sure that these two changes uh, you have made. And this scopes are uh, like uh, what is the scope that you want to provide this mail soft. As per our demo purpose, we are going to use uh, chat.write because we wanted to send the message. So we'll click on permissions. And once uh, we are within auth and permissions, if you scroll down for the bot token scope, this is the place where we need to add. So click on add, add auth scope, uh, sorry, scope. And then we are going to say chat write. This is the only one that we need. And then copy this paste it here under the scope and remove everything this is for the chat right and then we have got for callback path and authorized path and then external callback url okay so what we need to do here is 
we have created a HTTP listener in the previous video. So if you HTTPS HTTP secure listener. So if you are not, uh, if you have not done uh, that part, please uh, watch the previous video how you could create a HTTP secure listener, and then resume it for from here. So for the callback, we are going to say forward slash callback. This is my URL. For authorize, we are going to say forward slash authorize and this is going to be our external callback URL. Okay, the external callback URL which is going to uh, get the which is going to get the token. Okay, so what we are going to put here is first let's add an redirect URL. Okay, so we are going to say here let's say we are going to say https forward slash localhost colon 8082 callback. This is our external callback URL that we are putting here. Click on add and then save URLs. And same thing we need to go here and put it into the external callback URL. And then click on OK. So now your connector, the Slack connector configuration has been configured. Again, I'll just open it and showcase you. You could see, see here we've got uh, the small change we have added V2 here for both access token URL and authorized URL. We have added our consumer key and consumer secret. And for the external callback URL, these are the URLs that we have given here. For authorized, we have added a URL forward slash authorized. And for callback, it is forward slash callback. And this is the callback URL that we are referencing to our local system, okay, local host. And we click on OK. Then we need to go to this message flow section. And here, what we are going to do is we're going to add a listener here and let's say we're going to i'm going to give it a path as a message okay and in the listener we've got this uh, message and then let's go to this slack connector and go to slack post message okay so there are so many actions that we have within slack so we are going to use uh, we are going to send a message to the group okay yeah, and the connector name is send message. So just drag and drop into the process section. And you could see here we've got uh, display name is send message. Content. This is very important. So click on these uh, three dots to open this here. And there is a format. There is a format for sending the Slack message. And the format is very easy. That is, uh, we wanted to use the JSON format. So that's why I've added this directory here. Output application by JSON and the message that we wanted to send is what is the channel? So this is the channel name and I already have this channel called support channel if you see here and Then what message we wanted to send is message from Millsoft This is just the simple message the simple text message you could uh, uh, Create the message in a very better way you could use uh, uh, there is Slack uh, Slack block uh, block kit builder for Slack that actually gives you the ability to prepare your message and create the message. Okay, and then once the message is sent, we are going to have a transfer message at the end, and that is going to return a JSON file. And what we wanted to send is we're going to send whatever the payload that we're getting from Slack. So if you see here, this is the multiple information that is being written from Slack. That is what we are going to return back to the user. Now let's save this and run our application. And you can see here, our application has been deployed. Now once our application is deployed, what we need to do is, first we need to authorize, we need to authenticate with Slack. So how we will do is, if you remember, we have our uh, Localhost is basically secured with the HTTPS. So we are going to use localhost colon 8082. And then this is our authorize. Authorize is the path that we have given for authorize, right? So if you not remember, you go to your Slack message, the send message connector, and uh, under the connector configuration, if you click on this edit button, you could see here the authorize is the forward slash authorize is the url that we have given and our our uh, http connector the connector that we have configured is on localhost port 8082 
So the complete URL is going to be localhost colon 8082 forward slash authorize. Okay. And if you hit hit this, okay, if you hit enter, you will see it is taking you to the Slack authorization here. It says this app was created member of Panther Schools. And this is my workspace. And I see there are two buttons allow and cancel. And if you click on allow, it is going to take me back to my callback URL. This is my callback, right? And we have got this code on the top and it says successfully retrieved access token. That means the access token has been successfully retrieved. Now, if we get back to our postman, because our application is already deployed, if you get back to a postman here, and instead of hello, if you say message, on the same port, HTTPS localhost 8082, and click send message, and we've got authenticated user is not in the channel. Okay. Okay, so what we need to do is we basically need to add our application okay into our support channel. So how we are going to add is we will go to our channel, go to the members, not members, uh, go to set integrations, click on add an app, and then here we will add our application that is Max the Mule. And you we, you could see here that our application has been added here into the channel now. And now if you get back to the postman. And hit send button you would see here that now the application like the we are getting 200 as a response and if you get back to our channel here you would see here it says message from Millsop so basically what we need to do is we need to add our bot our application into the support channel whatever the channel we have and then we would be able to send the message to slack from Millsop and what could be the use cases for this integration Suppose that you are sending some information to a third party system like Salesforce, you are creating some records and you want to send the failure message to the Slack message. Whatever the failures are coming, you wanted to send it to the Slack so that uh, the teams can easily uh, get to know that, okay, there was some error. What is the error? What flow is throwing that error? So you can send multiple information and team can immediately take the action. So that is how basically you could uh, use Slack integration with Mailsoft. This is it for this video. Thank you for your time. And please give it a like, share, subscribe, press the bell icon so that you don't miss any update from our channel. We will meet into another video with another interesting topic. Thank you.